Karl Marx was born on May 5th of 1818 in Trier, a town in the Kingdom of Prussia, now Germany. He was the son of a successful lawyer. Marx studied law, philosophy, and history at the University of Bonn and the University of Berlin, where he became interested in the philosophy of George Willem Friedrich Hegel. Friedrich Engels was born on November 28th, 1820, in Barmen. He was the son of a wealthy textile manufacturer, and Engels studied philosophy at the University of Berlin, where he also became interested in Hegelian philosophy. Marx and Engels met in 1844 in Paris and quickly became close friends and collaborators. They shared an interest in politics, philosophy, and economics, and they began to develop their ideas about socialism and communism. Karl Marx was a German philosopher, economist, historian, sociologist, and political theorist. He is best known for his influential writings on socialism, economics, and the class struggle, particularly his famous works, The Communist Manifesto and Das Kapital, which he co-authored with Friedrich Engels. Marx's ideas have had a significant impact on political and economic theory, as well as on social movements and political revolutions around the world. Friedrich Engels was a German philosopher, social scientist, and political theorist who is best known for his collaboration with Marx. Engels also wrote several influential works of his own, including The Condition of the Working Class in England and anti During. Marx and Engels developed a comprehensive theory of history, economics, and politics that is known as Marxism. Their ideas were based on the belief that the capitalist system was fundamentally flawed and that it would eventually be replaced by a socialist system. Marx and Engels believed that the capitalist system was based on the exploitation of the working class by the capitalist class, and that this exploitation would eventually lead to a revolution of the working class. They argued that this revolution would lead to the establishment of a socialist society in which the means of production would be owned collectively by the people. Their ideas have had a significant impact on political and economic theory, as well as on social movements and political revolutions around the world. Dialectical materialism is a philosophical approach that has had a significant impact on the development of Marxist theory. Developed by Marx and Engels, dialectical materialism is a method of analyzing the world that emphasizes the contradictions and conflicts that exist within it. At its core, dialectical materialism is a materialist approach to understanding the world that emphasizes the role of material conditions in shaping human consciousness and social relations. The dialectical method is central to dialectical materialism. This method involves the analysis of contradictions and conflicts in the natural and social world, and the resolution of these contradictions through a process of negation and synthesis. This means that when a contradiction is identified, one of the opposing elements must be negated in order to resolve the contradiction and create a new synthesis. According to dialectical materialism, the material world is the foundation of existence. Human consciousness and social relations are seen as emerging from and shaped by the material conditions of society. This materialist perspective is contrasted with idealist perspectives that prioritize ideas, values, and beliefs over material conditions which ignore the reason as to why people develop the ideas which they do within society. One of the key aspects of dialectical materialism is its emphasis on historical development. Marx and Engels believed that history was driven by the contradictions and conflicts that exist within society. They argued that these contradictions would eventually lead to a revolution of the working class which would establish a socialist society in which the means of production would be owned collectively by the workers who used them. Dialectical materialism has had a significant impact on Marxist theory and on social and political movements around the world. Its emphasis on material conditions and historical development have provided a framework for understanding the complex and social and economic challenges that have taken place over the past century. Its emphasis on the contradictions and conflicts within society has also provided a basis for understanding social movements and political revolutions. Historical materialism is a key concept within Marxist theory and refers to the idea that social, economic, and political developments can be understood as the result of underlying material conditions and class struggles. 
In other words, historical materialism is a way of analyzing history and society that prioritizes the material factors, such as economic and technological developments that shape social relations and institutions. Historical materialism holds that human societies have always been organized around systems of production and distribution, which are shaped by the technological and material conditions of the time. These systems create a relationship between different classes of people who are defined by their relationship to the means of production, i.e. who owns the land, who owns the factories, etc. Now, according to Marx, history is characterized by class struggles in which the ruling class seeks to maintain their power and control over the means of production, while the oppressed classes seek to overthrow them and establish a new social order. Historical materialism is a way of analyzing these class struggles and understanding how they relate to broader historical developments. For example, in feudal societies, the landed nobility controlled the means of production, or the, uh, the land, and exploited the peasant classes who worked the land in return for protection and access to resources. This system eventually gave way to capitalism, which was characterized by the emergence of the bourgeois, or the capitalist class, and the development of wage labor. Marxist theory holds that the contradictions inherent in capitalist society, such as the exploitation of workers, the accumulation of the wealth by a few, and the cyclical crises of overproduction and underconsumption, will eventually lead to the collapse of capitalism and the emergence of a new, more equitable social order. Well, some have criticized historical materialism as being overly deterministic or reductionist, it remains a key concept within Marxist theory and has influenced a wide range of social and political movements. Today, historical materialism continues to be used as a tool for understanding the dynamics of social and economic change and as a guide for those seeking to create a more just and equitable society. Marxian economics is a branch of economic theory that was developed by Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels in the mid-19th century. At its core, Marxian economics is a critique of the capitalist economic system and a proposal for an alternative socialist system. The central thesis of Marxian economics is that the capitalist economic system is inherently exploitative. This is because, under capitalism, the means of production are privately owned by capitalists who extract surplus value from workers in the form of profits. Marx argued that this exploitation would ultimately lead to a crisis of overproduction in which capitalists would be unable to sell their goods due to the lack of purchasing power among workers. Marxian economics also emphasizes the role of class struggle in economic development. Marx argued that the history of all societies is a history of class struggle, and that the struggle between the working class and the capitalist class is the driving force behind economic development. According to Marxian economics, the working class is the only class capable of leading a successful revolution against the capitalist class, and the establishment of socialism is necessary to overcome the contradictions inherent in the capitalist system. Marxian economics also proposes an alternative economic system in which the means of production are owned collectively. Under socialism, the surplus value produced by workers would be distributed more equitably. One of the key contributions of Marxian economics is its analysis of the labor theory of value. Marx argued that the value of a commodity is determined by the amount of socially necessary labor time required to produce it. This theory challenged the prevailing classical economic theory of the time, which held that the value of a commodity was determined by its utility, or by its usefulness to customers. Another important aspect of Marxian economics is its analysis of the business cycle. Marx argued that the capitalist system is prone to cycles of boom and bust, which are driven by the tendency of capitalists to overinvest in production. This overinvestment eventually leads to a crisis of overproduction, in which capitalists are unable to sell their goods due to the lack of purchasing power among workers. George Willem Friedrich Hegel was a German philosopher who greatly influenced Karl Marx's intellectual development. Marx himself acknowledged Hegel as one of the most important influences on his thought, and his ideas are evident throughout Marx's work. 
Hegel's philosophical system emphasized the dialectical process of historical development, in which contradictions and conflicts lead to new forms of social organization and thought. Marx was particularly drawn to this dialectical approach which he used to develop his own theory of historical materialism previously covered. Marx's theory of historical materialism emphasizes the role of economic and material conditions in shaping social relations and historical development. He saw history as a series of class struggles driven by contradictions between the forces of production and the relations of production. These contradictions, Marx believed, would eventually lead to the overthrow of the ruling class and the establishment of a classless society. Marx's theory of historical materialism was heavily influenced by Hegel's dialectical approach. Marx saw this dialectic as a way of understanding the contradictions and conflicts that drive historical development. He believed that the contradictions inherent in capitalism would eventually lead to its downfall just as Hegel believed that the contradictions in human thought would eventually lead to the development of new ideas. Marx also drew on Hegel's concept of alienation in his critique of capitalism. Now, Hegel saw alienation as a fundamental aspect of human existence, in which individuals are separated from their true nature and their relationship to the world. Marx applies this concept to the economic realm, arguing that under capitalism, workers are alienated from the products of their labor and from their own true nature as creative beings. Das Kapital is a three-volume work by Karl Marx, published between 1867 and 1894. It's widely considered to be one of the most influential works of political economy and a seminal contribution to Marxist theory. The work itself is a critique of the capitalist economic system, and it analyzes the mechanisms of exploitation and the contradictions of capitalism. In Das Kapital, Marx argues the points we previously cover, such as that the capitalist system is based on the exploitation of the working class, his labor theory of value, the contradictions of capitalism, etc. Marx also analyzes the role of capital accumulation in the capitalist system. He argues that the accumulation of capital leads to the concentration of wealth and power in the hands of a small number of capitalists, creating a system of economic and political domination. One of the key contributions of Das Kapital is its analysis of the role of money in the capitalist system. Marx argues that money is a representation of the value of labor, and that it can be used as a means of exploiting workers, and he also argues that money is not a neutral medium of exchange, but is instead a form of power that can be used to control and to dominate others. The Communist Manifesto is a political pamphlet written by Marx and Engels in 1848, and is one of the most influential and important works of political theory ever written. The Communist Manifesto outlines the key principles of communism and the author's vision for a socialist revolution that would overthrow the capitalist system. The Communist Manifesto begins by outlining the history of class struggle, arguing that throughout history societies have been defined by the struggle between different classes. Marx argues that in the capitalist system, the bourgeois who owns the capital have become the dominant class while the proletariat, or the working class, are exploited and oppressed. Marx and Engels argue that the capitalist system is inherently unstable and that it is only a matter of time before it collapses under the weight of its own contradictions. They argue in this book that the only way to resolve the contradictions of the capitalist system is through a socialist revolution in which the proletariat overthrows the bourgeois. Marx and Engels also outline the key principles of communism, arguing that the means of production should be owned and controlled by the workers themselves. They argue that under communism there would be no more private property and no classes. The state would wither away and be replaced by a system of communal ownership and decision-making. One of the key contributions of the Communist Manifesto is its emphasis on the importance of international solidarity among the working class. Marx and Engels argue that the workers of all countries have a common interest in overthrowing the capitalist system and establishing socialist society. They call for the workers to unite across national boundaries and for the establishment 
of a socialist movement globally. The economic and philosophic manuscripts of 1844 are a collection of writings by Marx, which were not published during his lifetime, but have since become an important part of his intellectual legacy. The manuscripts are primarily concerned with Marx's critique of capitalism and his vision for a socialist alternative. One of the key themes of the economic and philosophical manuscripts is Marx's critique of alienation. Marx argues that under capitalism, workers are alienated from the products of their labor, from the processes of production itself, from other workers, and from their own human nature. And this alienation is caused by the separation of the worker from the means of production and the transformation of labor itself into a commodity. Marx also explores the concept of the species being, which refers to the essential nature of humans as creative social beings. He argues that under capitalism, this essential nature is distorted and repressed, leading to a sense of existential despair and a lack of fulfillment. In addition to his critique of alienation, Marx also outlines his vision for a socialist society. He argues that under socialism, the means of production would be owned collectively by the workers who would control the production process and the distribution of goods. This would, in turn, eliminate the exploitation of workers and the accumulation of wealth by the small capitalist class. Marx also explores the concept of labor under socialism, arguing that work would be transformed from a means of survival to a means of self-realization. Workers would have control over their own labor, and the creative potential of human beings would be fully realized. Socialism, Utopian and Scientific, is a seminal work by Engels which outlines the development of socialist thought and argues for the scientific basis of Marxist socialism as opposed to Utopian socialism. In the essay, Engels critiques the utopian socialists of his time, such as Robert Owen and Charles Fourier, and argues that Marxism provides a more scientific and materialist analysis of history and society. Engels begins by discussing the early utopian socialist movements of the 19th century, which he argues are based on moral and idealistic principles rather than material analysis. While he argues that these movements were important for raising awareness of the injustices of capitalism, Engels argues that they ultimately failed to provide a concrete and practical vision for the transformation of society. In contrast, Engels argues that Marxism is based on a scientific analysis of history and society, which recognizes the role of class struggle and material conditions in shaping social development. He emphasizes the importance of economic factors in understanding social change and argues that the struggle between the proletariat and the bourgeois is the driving force of historical progress. The Origin of the Family, Private Property, and the State is a groundbreaking work by Engels that explores the historical development of human society and the relationship between family structures, private property, and the state. Engels argues that the rise of private property in the state were intimately connected to the evolution of family structures and the social relations of early human societies. Engels begins by analyzing the earliest forms of human society, which he argues were based on primitive communism and the communal ownership of property. In these societies, there was no concept of private property and the social relations between individuals were based on kinship and communal ties. However, as human societies developed and agricultural production became more important, Engels argues that private property emerges as a way of organizing production and distributing resources. This leads to the rise of the patriarchal family structure, in which men controlled property and women were relegated to subordinate roles. Engels also argues that the rise of the state was closely linked to the development of private property and the patriarchal family structure. The state emerged as a means of enforcing property rights and protecting the interests of the ruling class, which were primarily men with property. Engels' analysis of the relationship between family structures, private property, and the state was groundbreaking for its time and it continues to be an influential work in the fields of sociology and anthropology. Engels argues that the exploitation of women and the oppression of the working class are deeply rooted in the history of human society, and that they can only be overcome through a revolutionary transformation of social relations and the abolition of private property. 
What occurs when you put all of these analyses and theories together is you achieve Marxist socialism, which in essence, to oversimplify the ideology, is a belief that the means of production, such as the factories, farms, and other resources, should be owned and controlled by the working class, but the state plays a crucial role in maintaining and perpetuating capitalist systems of power and exploitation, and finally, that society's goods and services should be produced and distributed based on need rather than profit. Georges Sorel was a French philosopher, theorist, and revolutionary socialist who lived from 1847 to 1922. He is best known for his contributions to the development of the political theory of syndicalism, which advocated for the establishment of a society based on the principles of worker self-management and direct action. Sorel's work was heavily influenced by Marxism, which he used as a basis for his own theories and ideas. Sorel's early political beliefs were shaped by the ideas of Marxism, and he was an active member of the French Socialist Party. However, he became disillusioned with the mainstream socialist movement, which he believed had become too focused on electoral politics and reformist strategies. Instead, Sorel became drawn to the more revolutionary strands of socialist thought, which emphasized the need for direct action and the overthrow of the existing order. In his most famous work, Reflections on Violence, Sorel articulated his vision of a revolutionary society based on the principles of worker self-management and direct action. He drew heavily on the ideas of Marx and Engels, particularly their theories of class struggle and the role of the proletariat in the revolution. However, Sorel also criticized what he saw as the mechanical and dogmatic tendencies of traditional Marxism, which he believed had become overly focused on economic determinism and had lost sight of the importance of political will and revolutionary action. Sorel's rejection of traditional Marxist orthodoxy led him to develop his own distinctive theories and ideas. In Sorel's view, the working class was the key to revolutionary change and its power could be harnessed through the establishment of a network of revolutionary trade unions. These unions would be based on the principles of direct action and would be committed to the overthrow of the existing social and political order. Sorel's syndicalist theories had a profound impact on the labor movement and revolutionary politics in Europe in the early 20th century, particularly in France and Italy. However, his ideas also had a lasting influence on a wide range of other political movements, including fascism and national syndicalism. Neo-Marxism is a broad term that refers to various schools of thought that have sought to build upon and expand upon the ideas of classical Marxism. While there is no single unified theory of neo-Marxism, there are several key themes and concepts that are common across many neo-Marxist approaches. One of the central tenets of neo-Marxism is a focus on cultural and ideological factors in addition to economic factors in shaping social relations and historical development. While classical Marxism emphasizes the primacy of economic relations, neo-Marxists have sought to develop a more nuanced understanding of the interplay between economic, political, and cultural factors. Another key theme in neo-Marxism is a rejection of the determinism and teleology that is sometimes associated with classical Marxism. While Marx himself believed that the contradictions inherent in capitalism would inevitably lead to its downfall and the establishment of a classless society, neo-Marxists have tended to be more skeptical of such claims, instead emphasizing the complexity and contingency of historical development. One prominent school of neo-Marxism is the Frankfurt School, which emerged in Germany in the 1920s and 30s. The Frankfurt School was a group of philosophers and social theorists who sought to apply Marxist analysis to the study of culture and society. They developed a critical theory of society that sought to expose the underlying power relations and ideological biases that shape social reality. Another important strand of neo-Marxism is the work of Antonio Gramsci, an Italian Marxist who lived in the early 20th century. Gramsci emphasized the importance of culture and ideology in maintaining the dominance of ruling elites, and he developed the concept of cultural hegemony to describe the ways in which dominant groups maintain their power through the production and dissemination of cultural norms and values. In recent decades, neo-Marxism has continued to evolve and expand. 
Feminist post-colonial theorists, for example, have sought to develop neo-Marxist analyses that take into account the ways in which gender and race intersect with class in shaping social relations and historical development. The Frankfurt School, previously mentioned, was a group of scholars associated with the Institute for Social Research at Goethe University in Frankfurt, Germany. Founded in 1923, the Frankfurt School was initially focused on applying Marxist analysis to the study of capitalist society. However, the school's approach evolved over time, and its members became increasingly interested in the role of culture and ideology in shaping social reality. One of the key figures associated with the Frankfurt School was Max Horkheimer, who served as the director of the Institute for Social Research from 1930 to 1958. Horkheimer was a critical theorist who sought to develop a Marxist analysis of culture and society that could explain the persistence of capitalism in the face of its inherent contradictions. Another important member of the Frankfurt School was Theodore Adorno, who was known for his contributions to the fields of musicology and sociology. Adorno was particularly interested in the role of mass media and popular culture in shaping public opinion and maintaining the dominance of ruling elites. The Frankfurt School's approach to social analysis was interdisciplinary, drawing on insights from philosophy, sociology, psychology, and cultural studies. The school's members sought to develop a critical theory of society that could expose the underlying power relations and ideological biases that shape social reality. One of the key concepts associated with the Frankfurt School is the idea of the culture industry. This concept refers to the ways in which capitalist societies produce and disseminate culture for the purposes of maintaining social control. The culture industry produces a never-ending stream of commodities from movies and television shows to music and fashion that are designed to distract and entertain the masses while reinforcing the dominant values and norms of society. The Frankfurt School's emphasis on the role of culture and ideology in shaping social reality has had a profound impact on contemporary social theory. Its members have been influential in the development of critical theory, postmodernism, and other approaches to the study of culture and society. Antonio Gramsci was an Italian Marxist philosopher and communist politician who lived from 1891 to 1937. He is best known for his theories on cultural hegemony, which have had a profound impact on Marxist thought and the fields of cultural studies, sociology, and political science. Gramsci's ideas were heavily influenced by Marx and Engels, as well as the Italian Socialist Party and the Russian Revolution of 1917. However, he was critical of some aspects of traditional Marxist theory, particularly its focus on economic determinism and class struggle. Instead, Gramsci believed that the ruling class maintained its power not just through economic means, but also through cultural domination and the control of ideas and beliefs. Gramsci's most famous work is The Prison Notebook, a collection of writings he produced while imprisoned by the fascist government of Benito Mussolini in the 20s and 30s. In the notebooks, Gramsci develops his ideas on cultural hegemony and outlines a strategy for achieving socialist revolution through a process of cultural transformation and intellectual leadership. Gramsci argued that the ruling class maintained its power not just through force and coercion, but also through the construction of a dominant culture that reinforces its own values and beliefs. This cultural hegemony allowed the ruling class to maintain its power even when its economic position was threatened by shaping the beliefs and attitudes of the masses in ways that supported the status quo. Gramsci believed that the key to achieving socialist revolution was to challenge this cultural hegemony and construct an alternative culture that supported the interests of the working class. This involved building a new intellectual leadership that could articulate the interests and values of the working class, as well as creating new institutions and forms of cultural expression that could challenge the dominant culture. Leninism is a political theory in practice named after Vladimir Lenin, the founder and first leader of the Soviet Union. It's a development of Marxist theory that emphasizes the importance of a revolutionary vanguard party to lead the working class masses to overthrow capitalism and establish a socialist society. 
Leninism is characterized by its emphasis on revolutionary strategy and tactics, and its belief in the necessity of a disciplined and centralized party organization, and its rejection of parliamentary democracy as the means of achieving revolutionary change. Leninism emerges in the early 20th century as a response to the failure of the European Socialist parties to prevent World War I and to seize power in the state in its aftermath. Lenin argued that the working class could not simply take over the existing state apparatus, which was controlled by the bourgeois, but instead needed to build its own independent state machinery, led by a vanguard party that was dedicated to the revolutionary struggle. This led to the use of the concept of the dictatorship of the proletariat, a phrase used by Marx and Engels to describe the transitional period between capitalism and socialism during which the working class would exercise political power and suppress the resistance of the capitalist class. Leninism also emphasizes the importance of political education and propaganda in preparing the masses for revolutionary action. Lenin believed that the working class needed to be educated about the nature of capitalism and the need for socialism, and that the party had a responsibility to spread revolutionary ideas among the masses. This leads to the development of a vast network of communist newspapers, journals, and study groups, which played a key role in organizing and mobilizing the working class. Leninism also had a significant impact on the course of the 20th century, particularly in the Soviet Union and other socialist states that emerged after World War II. Lenin's emphasis on party discipline and centralized control helped to create a powerful, efficient, and highly centralized state apparatus which was able to mobilize resources for rapid industrialization and modernization. Trotskyism is characterized by its emphasis on permanent revolution, holding that socialist revolution must be global and not limited to a single country. The Trotskyists argue that socialism can only survive if it's part of a broader international revolutionary movement rather than relying on its own resources in isolation. Trotskyism emphasizes the importance of proletarian democracy, which involves the active participation of workers in the decision-making processes of a socialist state. Trotskyists reject the idea of a vanguard party or a centralized state apparatus that would exercise control over the working class, arguing that such an approach would lead to the re-establishment of capitalism. Despite these ideas and principles, Trotskyism has been subject to criticism and opposition from various political factions, including other Marxist-Leninist groups. Some of the criticisms directed at Trotskyism include accusations of sectarianism, dogmatism, and a lack of practicality, others arguing that Trotskyism places too much emphasis on theoretical abstractions and fails to account for the realities of political power and struggle. Marxism had a significant impact on the political ideology of Joseph Stalin, the leader of the Soviet Union from the mid-1920s until his death in 1953. Stalinism, which is the political ideology developed by Stalin, is often considered to be a deviation from traditional Marxism and has often been criticized for its authoritarianism, even totalitarianism, and its violation of human rights. Stalinism was rooted in Marxist theory, particularly in the idea of the proletarian revolution and the establishment of a socialist state. Stalinism focused, though, primarily on rapid industrialization and collectivization of agriculture, the development of a planned economy, and the use of the state power to achieve these goals. Stalin's interpretation of Marxism rejected the idea of a peaceful transition to socialism, and instead emphasized the necessity of a violent revolution. One of the key elements of Stalinism was the concept of a vanguard party, as utilized by Lenin, which was a small, disciplined group of revolutionaries who would lead the working class in the revolution and the construction of socialism. Stalin believed that the vanguard party was necessary to protect the revolution and to ensure its success. He also believed in the importance of party discipline and centralized control, which allows the state to maintain control and monopoly over all aspects of society. Stalinism also included the idea of socialism in one country, which argued that a socialist revolution could be successful in a single country rather than requiring a global revolution. This idea was a departure from traditional Marxist theory, which argued for a worldwide proletarian revolution. 
Stalin was opposed to Trotsky, who advocated for the Bolsheviks to export the revolution and to do a revolutionary conquest, essentially. However, Stalin believed that this would be the doom of the revolution and that Trotsky was a madman, which he was, who would kill the revolution through his blind ambition. And Stalin, on the other hand, believed that the socialists should first attempt to strengthen the socialist state and develop socialism here at home before exporting the revolution elsewhere. The implementation of Stalinism in the Soviet Union was characterized by authoritarianism and the suppression of political opposition, but also helped to bring Russia into the modern age, industrializing Russia over the course of a few years, which would allow it to successfully go head to head against the most powerful military in the world in World War II. Stalin's government engaged in widespread purges and repression, with millions of people executed or sent to labor camps. The government also controlled the media and propaganda, creating a cult of personality around Joseph Stalin. Maoism is a political theory developed by Mao Zedong, the Chinese communist revolutionary that is based on Stalinism. It's a form of Marxist thought that emphasizes the role of the peasantry in revolutionary struggle as well as the importance of guerrilla warfare. Maoism has its roots in China's own experience of revolution and specifically in Mao's role as a leader of the Chinese Communist Party. One of the most significant ways in which Marxism influenced Maoism was in Mao's approach to revolutionary strategy. Mao's theory of protracted people's war was based on the Marxist principle of the revolutionary potential of the masses. According to Mao, the revolutionary struggle would not be won through a single decisive battle, but through a prolonged struggle that mobilized the people at all levels of society. Titoism is a political ideology that emerged in Yugoslavia under the leadership of Josep Tito, who led the country from its establishment after World War II until his death in 1980. Titoism is characterized by its independent socialist approach, which distinguishes it from other Marxist-Leninist ideologies of the time. At its core, Titoism emphasized the importance of national sovereignty and self-determination, rejecting the idea that the Soviet Union could dictate the policies of other communist countries. Instead, Tito sought to promote a form of socialism that was unique to Yugoslavia and reflective of the country's own history and culture. This approach earned him both admirers and critics among the international communist movement. Titoism also emphasized decentralization and worker self-management, with the goal of creating a more democratic form of socialism that would be responsive to the needs and aspirations of ordinary citizens. Tito believed that by empowering workers and local communities, Yugoslavia could avoid the pitfalls of bureaucratic centralization that had plagued other socialist states. In practice, Titoism resulted in a mixed record of success and failure, on the one hand, Yugoslavia experienced significant economic growth and development under Tito's leadership, with a strong emphasis on industrialization and modernization. The country also pursued a policy of non-alignment, refusing to align with either the Soviet Union or the United States during the Cold War. On the other hand, Titoism also created tensions within Yugoslavia's diverse population, which included a number of ethnic and linguistic groups with distinct cultural traditions and identities. And while Tito sought to promote unity and solidarity among these groups, his policies also led to resentment and conflict, particularly among the Albanian and Croatian populations. Marxism has been influential in inspiring many monsters throughout the course of history. Why? Well, because Marx is convincing. Marxism is convincing, and Marxism creates a framework which workers better understand their nations and their working conditions and the environments that they live in, and creates a message that people can easily rally around. Marxism had a significant influence on national syndicalism and phalangism, which emerged in Europe in the early 20th century. Both national syndicalism and phalangism were influenced by Marxism, particularly Marxist ideas about class struggle and the importance of the working class. National syndicalism emphasized the importance of trade unions and workers' rights, while phalangism, a sub-ideology within national syndicalism, called for the creation of a corporatist state in which the workers would have equal representation with employers. However, both national syndicalism and phalangism diverged from traditional Marxism in significant ways, 
while emphasizing the importance of the working class, they also emphasize the importance of nationalism and cultural heritage and traditional values. Furthermore, national syndicalism and phalangism reject the idea of a proletarian revolution, instead focusing on achieving their goals through national unity and the creation of a corporatist state with class collaborationism involved. This rejection of revolutionary tactics is a departure from traditional Marxist theory, which advocates for the overthrow of the bourgeois rather than collaboration between the bourgeois and the proletariat. Alexander Dugin is a Russian political theorist who has been heavily influenced by Marxism throughout his career. However, his interpretation of Marxism is somewhat unique as he combines it with other ideological frameworks to form his own distinct political philosophy, which he personally commonly refers to as Eurasianism, which advocates for the establishment of a pan-Eurasianist state that would oppose the influence of the West and promote traditional values. Dugan's interest in Marxism began during his time as a student at the Moscow State University, where he became involved with the Soviet dissident movement. He was particularly drawn to the writings of Italian Marxist philosopher Antonio Gramsci, whose ideas about cultural hegemony and the role of intellectuals in social change had a profound impact on Dugan's thinking. However, Dugan's Marxism was always tempered by his belief in the importance of traditionalism and the rejection of liberal democracy. He was critical of the Soviet Union's adoption of Marxism, arguing that it had abandoned its traditional cultural values in the process. Instead, he sought to combine Marxism with other ideological frameworks, including fascism, traditionalism, and nationalism. In his writings, Dugan often draws on Marxist concepts such as class struggle, and the historical dialectic, but he interprets them in a way that is consistent with his Eurasianist worldview. For example, he argues that the class struggle shouldn't be understood only in economic terms, but also in terms of cultural and ideological conflicts. He also sees the historical dialectic as a struggle between different civilizations rather than a linear progression towards communism. Marxist ideas played an important role in shaping anti-racist activist critiques of American society. Marxist thinkers argued that racism was an integral part of the capitalist system and that the exploitation of minority groups was a fundamental feature of the American economy. This analysis resonated with many African-American activists after the civil rights era who saw their struggle for civil rights as part of a broader struggle against economic and political oppression. One of the key ways in which Marxist ideas influenced the anti-racism movement was through the development of a theory of intersectionality. Intersectionality refers to the idea that forms of oppression such as racism, sexism, and economic exploitation are interconnected and cannot be fully understood in isolation from one another. This concept helped activists to understand the ways in which racism intersected with other forms of oppression, such as poverty and gender discrimination, to create a complex web of social inequality. Anti-racism activists argued that racism was not simply a matter of individual prejudice, but was deeply rooted in the structures and institutions of society. They saw the struggle against racism as part of a broader struggle against capitalism and other forms of systemic oppression. One of the key ways in which Marxist ideas have influenced anti-racist activism is through the concept of structural racism. Structural racism refers to the ways in which racial inequality is built into the social, economic, and political structures of society. This concept has helped activists to understand the ways in which racism is not simply a matter of individual attitudes, but is deeply embedded in the institutions and practices of a society. In addition to these theoretical contributions, Marxist activists played an important role in organizing anti-racism movements and campaigns. Marxist groups such as the Black Panther Party and the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee played key roles in the civil rights movement, organizing protests, voter registration drives, and other forms of direct action. China has a long and complex history with communism. In 1949, the Communist Party of China came to power, and since then, the country has been officially governed by a Communist Party. However, over the years, the Chinese Communist Party, or the CCP, has evolved and changed, leading some to question whether its current form of government is truly socialist or has taken on elements of fascism. The Chinese Communist Party has implemented a number of socialist policies over the years, including collectivization of agriculture and the nationalization of industry. 
The party also claims to be committed to the ultimate goal of communism, which is the establishment of a classless society. However, many argue that the Chinese Communist Party has deviated from true socialism in practice. One of the main criticisms of the Chinese Communist Party is that it has become increasingly authoritarian over the years. The party tightly controls media and censors the internet, limiting freedom of speech and access to information. The party has also been criticized for its human rights record, including the treatment of ethnic minorities such as the Uyghurs in Zhejiang and the suppression of pro-democracy protests in Hong Kong. Some scholars and observers have argued that the current form of the Chinese government, although espousing communism, has taken on elements of fascism, including ultranationalism, authoritarianism, elements of corporatism, and suppression of dissent. Giovanni Gentile was an Italian fascist philosopher who critiqued Marxism from his own philosophical perspective. In his view, Marxism was flawed because it failed to take into account the full complexity of human experience and the ways in which society and individuals interact. While Gentile acknowledged the importance of material conditions, he argued that they were not the only factor at play, believing that human experience was shaped by a complex interaction between the ideas of individuals and society, personal relationships, cultural values, national relations, and biological needs. These factors, however, ultimately come down to material conditions entirely, so Giovanni Gentile's critiques, validity, may certainly be called into question. The state of Marxism today is complex and multifaceted. While it continues to face significant challenges and criticisms, Marxism remains an important and influential intellectual tradition that continues to inspire and inform social movements, academic research, and political debates around the world. As new forms of Marxist theory continue to emerge, it is likely that Marxist thought will continue to evolve and adapt to changing political and economic circumstances, remaining relevant and powerful for years to come. Marxism as a political ideology has been around for more than a century, and its appeal has varied in different parts of the world and at different times. However, in recent years, Marxism has been experiencing a renewed interest and growing appeal around the world. One of the primary reasons for the growing appeal of Marxism is the increasing economic inequality that exists in many countries around the world. The global economy has been structured in such a way that wealth and power are concentrated in the hands of a few individuals and corporations. This has led to a situation where a small percentage of the population controls the vast majority of resources. Marxism, with its emphasis on redistribution of wealth and the elimination of economic inequality, offers a compelling alternative to this status quo. 